Okay, um, hello everyone. All right, so now let's see a quick example of um, how we can mix the GeoOption Panes show message dialog and the, the GeoOption Panes show input dialog, and in a mini, in a, in a some kind of a mini program similar to the previous one we did, but you know, just um, with a little bit of variation. All right, so first thing we need to do is import the GeoOption Pane class. All right, import Java X dot swing dot J option pane. It's the name of the class. We are importing the sorry, Geoption Pane class located in the Java X dot swing package in the Java API. All right. Then with the Geoption Pane, we don't have to create an object. We can just use the name of the class and access the methods in the class. Again, we'll talk more about methods and classes, right? Um yeah, classes and methods in the future. So J option pane, I want to ask the user to let's say type in their first name, their last name, and their middle name is well, let's just use first name and last name. So to show the tell, um to get information from the user, we are going to use the J option pane's show input dialog, right? So J option pane dot show input dialog. And over here, we're going to pass in the message that is going to display to the, uh, to the user so they can type in something. So we're going to say, please enter your first name. And we know that this is going to pop up some kind of dialog box and with a text with some kind of a text box in it and wait for the user to type in a value. And whatever value the user is going to type is going to be returned to us. It's going to be returned as a string right here. It's going to be returned as a string. So we need to accept it. We need to have a place to store it. So I'm going to come up here right before it and declare a variable of type string. Oops, here, hold on. Okay, just making, making sure it's indented properly. It's indented properly. All right, so created string variable, I'm going to call it user first name. And user first name is going to store whatever value the user typed when this dialog box was displayed to the user, right? So first name is going to be stored here, all right? All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for the last name. So I'm going to make a copy of this line. And I, you can retype it if you want. I can retype it if I want. I'm going to make it a, a copy of this. I'm going to tell the user to please enter their last name, change this. Last name is going to be stored in a different variable, so I'm going to create another variable. I'm going to call it user last name. All right, and change this to user last name because that's going to store the last name the user types. Show input dialog. It's going to display this message, allow the user to type in something, and whatever the user types is going to be returned back to us into user last name. Same thing. Whatever the user types for first name is going to be returned back to us in user first name. And then now we can use the G option panes show mess uh, sh so, um, show message dialog to display the result using the values in this. Okay, it's very similar to the last one we did. But we're going to kind of concatenate things um, you know like we did you know in the in the other one too. Alright but I just want you want us to play with it more so we can get used to it. Alright so I'm going to Call the geoption panes dot show message dialog. This time I'm not going to forget the null value. All right, so null is going to center the dialog box on the screen. We know that, right? In the future, we'll talk more about it and how we can try to position dialog boxes in different areas of the screen. But for now, we're going to always put null um, because we want to just you know see how it works. We're going to center it on the screen. And then this is what we want to display. So I'm just going to say hello, right? Space. And I'm going to concatenate it with their first name, user first name. And then concatenate it with a space because we want to, to uh, put a space between their first name and last name. Concatenate it with their last name, user last name. Right? Because these, these are the variables containing those values. And then add another message saying, Good morning. It's similar to the so similar to the one we did. Good morning. With a nice smiley face. Yeah, something like this. Let me just test something here. Oh, this won't work, right? I was trying to you know uh, pull up pull um uh, some kind of a smiley face, but it, it doesn't work in program, I guess. 
Um, I don't want to restart it. Oops, when I tested it, I guess it's going to, I hope it doesn't restart it. Okay, it didn't. Um, and um, don't worry, don't worry about this. Just forget about it. It's, I just I try to use Command Control Space to try to pull up a smiley face to see if it's going to work, but I should have known better. Uh, it's, it shouldn't work. But hey, there's no harm in trying sometimes, right? All right, so let's continue. Good morning, and I just put a nice smiley face with just regular text, with regular symbols. Okay, so compile this. Okay, we have some errors. So let's try to fix it. Let's see what ha what's happening. Cannot find symbol, variable user last name. All right, so over here I referred to user last name, and over here I'm referring to user last name. I forgot the T, so it's trying to say that hey, this use this user last name doesn't exist. But what it knows is user last name without a T. So I need to make sure they match. So that now it says okay, you're referring to this variable. All right. So I'm going to compile. Now we have another error, so let's fix that too. <laughs> so over here I declare, well, what the error is saying is, cannot find symbol, user fist name. It's saying, what is user fist name? Over here you told me that it's user first name. What is user fist name? It doesn't exist, so it doesn't know what this is. It's cannot find this thing, because I haven't declared it here. What I declared was user first name, so I need to make sure they match up over here too. So I'm going to put in the R, because it's not user first, it's user first. Compile this, and now it's working. All right, forget about this again. Just don't worry too much about it. Um, actually, honestly, let me just click it and see. Dismiss. Good, 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 good. It's gone. <laughs> I'm happy now. All right, compile this. Now we're good. Run, run this, and let's see what happens. Please enter your first name. I'm going to say Atta Kakra. Last name. So the in, the dialog boxes are displayed to you one after the other. Wait for you to type in the result. The response before. Um, it, it pops up the next one if there are any. Do you tell me? Hang on. Okay. Now it says, Hello, Atakakra, do you tell me? Hang on. Good morning, right? So w w right now everything is displayed on one line. What if you wanted to break it into two? You know, break, break this line into two and then have good morning dis displayed on the next line. Now it's similar to the system.out.println statement. Remember, we can embed. That's um, the, um, the new line character in there, right? The escape sequence, the new line character to kind of break the line. And so it depends on what we want to break it. So after hello, username, and uh, user first name and user last name, before it, before it, right before it says good morning, we don't even need a space before it. Let's close the space. And right before, right after the period, we want to, we want to put a line break there or a new line character there so that Anything that comes after that new line character will be sp will be displayed on the next line. So we know how to do this from our, our um, that video, um, the the new line character video, some videos back. So backslash n we know that right, and backslash n we know is going to create some kind of a line break right. So anything that comes after it will be displayed from the next line going, right. So we know backslash n is a new line character which create a new line, breaks the line, so anything that comes after it will be displayed on that next line. We don't have to have a space because otherwise there'll be a space before, in, you know, a space included with a good morning. We don't want that. If it's on the next line, we don't want a space before. We just want to close it. When the program sees this, I have low battery, 5%. Unbelievable. <laughs> but um, I'll finish this before that. When the when the when the interpreter sees this or when the compiler sees this backslash, it's going to expect one of the special characters, and n happens to be one of the special characters, or one of the special escape characters. And so, anytime it sees one of the special escape characters, it performs what it's supposed to do. In this case, when it sees backslash and it expects one of the ex escape characters, and it sees n, which happens to be one of the escape characters, it's going to break the line. And anything that comes after that new line character is going to appear on the next line. So there's a video on the new uh, new line character. You can watch it just to have an idea of it if you haven't. Um, so let's see how how this affected. Compile this. Run. I'm going to type in the same values that are Kakra. Last names. Ditomi Hennen. Now it says hello at Kakra Ditomi Hennen, and then good morning. All right. So that's how to even display multiple lines on um, 
on on your on your on your dialog box just so you don't have it too long or you just you can have it short hit ok and it cancels okay we'll talk more about the option pane um, so if you have any questions please comment down below and I'll do everything to respond to them thank you very much for watching take care of yourselves as always have a good day have a good night have a nice time sound sleep <laughs> um, let me know if you have any questions as always and I'll do my best to respond to them take care of yourselves <laughs> I've said this over and over again but I mean them okay I always mean them <laughs> uh, and I'll see you next time with the next video let me end before I before I keep talking I know I talk a lot all right then bye bye guys